So today we are going to talk about planes, uh, spherical coordinates, and cylindrical coordinates. All right, so starting off with planes. Um, so a plane in R3 is determined by a point on the plane and a vector normal to the plane. So we're going to have a point x naught, y naught, z naught. This is a point on the plane. And we're going to have a normal vector to the plane. Call it ABC. Um, so if this vector is normal to the plane, we'll have like, you know, the plane, draw a little parallelogram, this vector coming out is normal to it. And let's say this is the point x naught, y naught, v naught. Then the vector x minus x naught, y minus y naught, and z minus z naught would look like this if x, y, z is an arbitrary point on the plane. And so since n is orthogonal or normal or perpendicular to the plane and this vector is parallel to the plane, then n dot this vector has to equal zero. So that is ABC, the dot product of these two, is, since they're orthogonal, must be zero. Okay, now just taking the dot product of these two vectors, we're going to have A, X minus X naught, plus B times Y minus Y naught, plus C times Z minus Z naught equals zero. Then distributing everything out, we have A, X minus, well, A, X naught, but that's just a number because we know what A is and we know what X naught is. And similarly, we get B plus Y minus B, Y naught plus C, Z minus C, Z naught equals, equals zero. And so we would just combine these numbers. We would add them all up, move it over to the other side, and we get the form AX plus BY plus CZ equals some D. Um, and we will call this the level set equation of a plane. Um, so let's uh, let's get started at an example. We have um, let's see. Uh, find the equation of the plane through the point. Two, four, negative one with a uh, no vector, right, perpendicular vector, uh, n equals two, two, three, four. We're also instructed to uh, find the intercepts and sketch. Okay. So this is my point, x naught, y naught, z naught. So we're just going to follow this form right here. We have a normal vector, 2, 3, 4, dotted with x minus 2, right, because this is x naught, y minus y naught being 4, and z minus z naught, that's minus negative 1, that's plus 1, 
since it's orthogonal, it has to equal zero. So we get two uh, x minus four. We get uh, let's see, that's going to be a plus three y minus twelve, and then we get a plus four z plus four equals zero. Uh, let's see, we have a negative four and a positive four. They cancel. So we have two x plus three y plus 4z, and let's just move the 12 over to the right-hand side, so we get equals 12. So this is the level set equation of our plane. Not too bad, right? So how do we find the intercepts of this plane? That is, how do we find where it crosses the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis? Have any ideas? Yeah, z-axis is where the x and y are zero. I, I heard multiple messages come up, but I only saw one of them. So yeah, z-axis, this implies that x equals y equals zero. The y-axis implies that y equals, no, x equals z equals zero. And the x-axis intercept would be y equals z equals zero. And we just plug them in, solve for the other variable. So let's start with the x-axis, right? We have two x, well, y and z are zero, so that's plus three times zero, which is zero, plus four times zero, which is zero, equals 12. So that means x is equal to six. So we have the point six, zero, zero, as the x-intercept. Uh, in a similar manner, we can proceed with the y. So we would have uh, 2 times 0 being 0, plus 3y, plus 4 times 0 is 0, equals 12. So that's going to be y is equal to 4. 0, 4, 0. X, y, z. All right. For the z-axis, 2 times 0 is 0, plus 3 times 0 is 0, plus 4z equals 12. That means z is equal to 3. So we have the point 0, 0, 3. All right, let's graph it. OK, so this is z, this is x, this is y. The x goes 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, y goes to 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And the z goes up 3, 1, 2, 3. And then we just connect the dots. And that's a plane. So in addition to the level set equation, we also have um, a parameterization for planes. Uh, recall from last time that um, we had the parameterization of a line. The parameterization of a line, R of T, was uh, R naught, a point on the line, plus the slope vector times time, or you know, really just a scaling of uh, the slope vector. You look at it as time. You could look at it as a scaling, and then this was. Uh, X naught plus A T, Y naught plus B T, B naught plus C T. And that was the parameterization of a line. Notice it has uh, 
one variable. Now the parameterization for a plane is going to have two variables, S and T. I want to put over here, you know, semicolon. T is any real number. Scalar. Um, and so, so, so I was looking at uh, y'all's. Uh, I don't know what it was. Some, some homework um, that y'all's professor posted, and he he gave this equation. Uh, I personally, I didn't do parameterizations of planes in this class, but you know, it's 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 good. It's good to know. He gave uh, u plus s times v plus t times w where S, T are real numbers. Um, U is a point on the plane. And then um, V and W are vectors parallel to the plane. So let's work an example to make some sense out of that. Um, so we have, this is number 26, page 824, out of uh, Stewart's 7th edition. Um, well, you would, uh, you would choose them. Let's see, let me draw a picture. Uh, so we would have like the normal vector. And you're saying if they were parallel, like this and this or something, I don't think it would work. No, no, it wouldn't work because that would just give you a line. If they were, if these were, if these two, if, if V and W were parallel, then you would get um, a line through the point U. Because, like, if we have vector v being, um, like, this way, and then vector w being this way, then we can span the entire plane by uh, a linear combination of these two vectors, right? A linear combination being the, the s and t and the addition of them. So, um, and then, of course, U is just any point. Like, this is U right here. This is the point U. Um, yeah. So um, we have, yeah, exactly, linearly independent, not parallel. Uh, so we have a plane through two, zero, one, and perpendicular to the line R of T equals three T, two minus T, three plus four T. Uh, and we want to find level set and parameterization. Okay, so does anyone know what the normal vector to this plane will be? What are V and W? We don't, we don't have uh, two vectors at this point. And there's an easier way to do it. Let's draw a picture first. So we have a plane through some point, right? It contains this point, uh, 201. And it's perpendicular to the line R of T equals yada, yada, blah, blah. 3, negative 1, 4. Yep, that's it. That's it. It's 3, negative 1, 4. Because this line right here, this R of T, is perpendicular. 
to our plane. And so that means the slope vector is perpendicular to our plane. So you're good, you're good. So, so um, yeah, drawing a picture, this always, this always really good. Um, so yeah, the, this what's the slope vector for R? We already, we already, we already said it was three, negative one, four, and that is the normal vector to our plane because the line's normal to the plane. If the line's normal to the plane, then the slope vector of that line will be normal to our plane. So um, yeah, we got n, and then you know our little formula n dot x minus x naught equals zero. That's how you get the level set equation. So we have three, negative one, four, dotted with x minus two, y minus zero is just y, and then we have z minus one, this equals zero. So we have three x minus six minus y plus four z minus four equals zero. And so this would be three x minus y plus four z equals 10. So this is a level set equation. Now we can work on the parameterization. So recall, I wrote it up here, but the parameterization as R of S of T equals U plus T V plus S W, I think I would. Um, so let's first find a point on the plane. So I'm going to solve this equation for z, and actually solving this for y would be a lot easier, right, because I wouldn't have any fractions to deal with. If I solve for z, I have to divide by 4. So let's solve for y. I'm going to add y over and subtract 10. So I have y is equal to 3x plus 4z minus 10. Okay, now to get a point on this plane, we can just plug in any two numbers for x and z and find what y would be. So think of some easy numbers. What easy numbers can we plug into here to find any point on this plane? Zero. Very nice, that's what I chose. If we do x equals z equals zero, that would also coincide with the y-intercept, would it not? And then we get y is equal to zero plus zero minus 10. So we have a point on the plane, writing it as a vector, um, zero, negative 10, zero. All right, so now we need um, two vectors perpendicular to the normal vector. We need like this, this V vector and this W vector. This V and this W. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna say, okay, well, we want this normal vector dotted with V to be equal to zero. And the normal vector dotted with W to be equal to zero. Okay, we know what the normal vector is. The normal vector is 3, negative 1, 4. And so I'm going to do 3, negative 1, 4, dot v1, v2, v3 equals 0. That implies that we have 3v1 minus v2 plus 4v3 equals 0. And Similarly, similar, I can't say that word ever. In a similar manner, uh, we would have uh, 3w1 minus w2 plus 4w3 equals 0. Um, and so let's solve for uh, this v2 and the u2, and then just plug in some numbers for uh, v1 and v3 and uh, get our vectors. So we have uh, v2 equals 3v1 plus 4v3. 
and um, plugging in any two numbers, V1 equals V3 equals 1. So we get V2 equals 7. And so our vector V would be 1, 7, 1. And now for vector W, let's do uh, let's do W1 equals 0, W3 equals 1. So we get W2 equals 4. And so our vector W would be 0, 4, 1. Um, now, we could pull a little check. We could check to see if these vectors are perpendicular to n by taking the dot product with m and n. So we have like, you know, 1, 7, 1 dotted with 3, negative 1, 4. This is uh, 1 times 3 is 3, 7 times negative 1, 7, 1 times 4, 4. 3 plus 4 is 7, minus 7 is equal to 0. So we're good. And then we have uh, 0, 4, 1 dotted with uh, 3, negative 1, 4. So we get 0 times 3 is 0. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. 1 times 4 is positive 4 equals 0. We're good. OK. So we have two vectors uh, perpendicular to the normal vector. That means they lie on the plane. And we have a point on the plane. So we can go ahead and write our parameterization. So R of S comma T equals, now the point we chose was the Y intercept, which was 0, negative 10, 0. Then we have T times V. T times V is T times 1, 7, 1 plus S times W, 0, 4, 1. OK. Now, uh, to convince you further, yeah, yeah, you could. That's, that's a good idea. Yeah, we could have just done 2, 0, 1, because we already know that's on the plane. That was given. Yeah, that's a, that's a better idea. Um, so yeah, let's see if we do like, you know, um, if we do like, you know, R of 1, 1, and let's see if this point satisfies this equation. So we would get uh, 0, negative 10, 0, plus 1, 7, 1, plus 0, 4, 1. So we get 0 plus 1 plus 0 is 0. We get negative 10 plus 7 plus 4. Uh, that's, what is that, 1? This is 0 plus 1 plus 0 is 1. And then we get 0 plus 1 plus 1 is 2. All right, and so plugging this point this, the, plugging this guy into here, we get 3 times 1 minus uh, 1 plus 4 times 2 equals 10. So this is 3 minus, minus 1 plus 8 equals 10. Well, that's 11 minus 1 is 10 equals 10. So we're good. And we can, you know, we can check more points if we want, if we want to be more certain. But this is this is a parameterization for our plane. Oops. Yeah. This is a parameterization for our plane. And there's, you know, there's multiple parameterizations. Like, like it was pointed out, we could pick a different point right here. We could have picked the point given, or we could have found different, you know, vectors.
Okay, so let's find um, let's find the plane through points three, negative one, and two, eight, two, four, and negative one, negative two, negative three. So we have like this point, P naught, P one, P two. We're gonna make a vector, make a vector, and then what do we do? We take the cross product of them to find the normal vector. And then that would be a plane. Okay, so let's find vector uh, P naught to P1. This is 8 minus 3 is 5. 2 minus negative 1 is 3. 4 minus 2 is 2. And let's do P naught to P. We get negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. We get negative 2 minus negative 1, that's negative 2 plus 1, that's negative 1, negative 3 minus 2, negative 5. So then my normal vector would be i, j, k, 5, 3, 2, negative 4, negative 1, negative 5. So this is going to be i times negative 15 plus 2 minus j times, let's see, we get negative 25 plus 8 plus k times, we get negative 5 plus 12. Okay, so this is negative 13, uh, let's see, 25 minus 8, 17, we get negative 17, but there's a negative out here, so it's positive 17, and then uh, 12 minus 5, 7. So that's our normal vector, and then we can do n dot x minus x naught equals zero. Okay, so we get um, negative 13, 17, 7 dotted with x minus, and any point, let's do p naught. We could have picked p1, we could have picked p2, but let's just do p naught. Um, x minus 3, y plus 1, z minus 2, equals zero. So then I get negative uh, 13x. Negative 13 times negative 3 would be positive 39. Then we have 17 times y plus 1. That's going to be plus 17y plus 17. Then you get 7 times z minus 2. That's going to be uh, plus 7z minus 14 equals 0. Adding these three numbers, we get uh, negative 13 plus 17y plus 7z. And then uh, 39 plus 17, well, 40 plus 17 is 57. Minus 1 is 56. And we got 56 minus 14. Uh, we get 42. It's a positive. It's positive. So when we move it over, we get a negative 42. Okay. So this is the level set equation of the plane. Um, now let's find a parameterization. And let's use the idea 
that we ha we already have you. We already have a point on there. I like that. Let's pick a P naught. So we're gonna have R of S T equals uh, three negative one two. And then uh, plus t times some vector v plus s times some vector w. Now, uh, same process as we did before. We're going to have uh, uh, well, v dot n equals 0 and w dot n equals 0. So. Uh, our normal vector was what? What is our normal vector? The vectors we already found above. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, sweet. Let's do that. Five, three, two. Man, you're on fire. Negative four, negative one, negative five. Done. Saved a lot of work. Yeah, very good. And, um, on you guys' homework, actually, he says, uh, he says, you know, find two parameterizations. Now, if we have to, we already found one, what's the easiest way to find the next one? Change the point. No, that's it. Change the point. Very good. All right. So, um, Let's talk about cylindrical coordinates now. Now, cylindrical coordinates, all that is is um, an extension Uh, of polar to uh, R3. And remember, you know, polar coordinates, the, the, the polar coordinate system. Here's my, okay. Recall uh, polar was on the xy plane R comma theta, where R is uh, distance from origin. And theta was uh, angle uh, from positive x-axis counterclockwise. So in the xy plane, you know, we have uh, some point where this distance right here is R and then this I do a different color this angle is theta now to extend this to three dimensions um, oh yeah yeah so polar and in polar um, we have the conversion x is equal to r sine theta, 
y is equal to r sine theta. And um, generally, you do, you know, r is greater than zero, though I've greater than or equal to zero, though I've had some problems where they give you like a negative r. Um, and then, you know, you could say, you could put some restriction on, on theta being in between, you know, negative or uh, uh, zero and pi over two. But, you know, you could plug in like negative theta, for instance, like, you know, the point um, five negative pi over two. Well, the negative pi over two just sends it, you know, this way. And then we would be five units down over here. So that would be the point five negative pi over two or whatever. Um, so um, for cylindrical coordinates, it's the same thing as polar, except we just add in z equals z. It's not too bad. So um, we have some identities. We have, um, well, let's do x squared plus y squared equals r cosine theta squared plus r sine theta squared, which is equal to r squared cosine squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta. Factoring out the r squared, oops, it's not right r squared cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. What is cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta? Yes. So, oh, r squared. This goes to one. So we have an identity. R r squared equals x squared plus y squared. And then, um, if you're given uh, a point x comma y, then a good way to find its radius would just be to use this, right? Just to find the distance from the origin, this Pythagorean theorem. Uh, now, if we have a point x comma y and we wanna find the angle from the you know, positive x-axis, we can do uh, tangent of theta equals y over x, right? We already knew that from trigonometry. Um, and then of course, if you wanna convert z, if you're given some z value, and you want to find the cylindrical z value is itself. So um, let's do an example. Um, let's convert cylindrical. To uh, rectangular. So if we have a point, uh, r theta z equals 4 pi over 3, negative 2, then um, converting it to rectangular, x is equal to r cosine theta would be 4 cosine of pi over 3. Well, we have pi over 3 over here, and then the x would be 1 half, so this would just be 2. y equals r sine theta is 4 sine of pi over 3, 4 root 3 over 2, that would be 2 root 3, and then z equals z is negative 2. But so this gives us, you know, a, uh, a point x, y, z equals 2, 2, root 3, negative 2. What is that? I mean, if you have a calculator, nice. If you could do some, you know, like, okay, well, this is like 1.7 times 2. You do that. But, you know, it would just be easier to graph it in, in cylindrical at this point. 
So if we want to graph this point in cylindrical coordinates, let's do that off to the side. Okay, so we have a radius of four. And then we, uh, this is the positive x-axis, right? This is the negative x-axis. And so theta was the same theta. It's the angle from the uh, positive x-axis counterclockwise. So it goes this direction. And this would be from the positive x-axis to the positive y-axis. This sweep would be uh, pi over 2. So we go only pi over 3 is about right here. Oh, that's a little bit too far to, to keep in, in kosher with the, uh, the radius. So maybe something like this. Oh, no. It keeps on doing that. All right, here you go. So that would just be polar coordinates by itself, but this isn't polar, this is cylindrical, right? So then we have to go down negative 2z. So z axis going down, we have a negative 1, we have a negative 2, and so we just drop down. And so that's our point. Cool. He's below the xy plane. <clears throat> uh, pi over 3 away from the positive x-axis and a radius of uh, 4 units away from the origin. Um, now, um, let's look at the point. Let's look at the point um, r theta z equals 2, negative pi over 2, 1. Now, let's just graph this, and I'm going to try something new. See if that works. So this is positive x, positive y, positive z. So we have a radius of two. And then we're going negative pi over two away from the positive x-axis. So that would be a clockwise rotation if you were looking at it bird's eye view from the z-axis, but it just goes this way. Okay? So that would just be, if, if I was to leave it like this, this would be the simple polar, but we have the z-coordinate of 1, so we travel up 1 unit. Boom. So this point lies directly above the negative y-axis. So what would this, uh, what would the coordinate be? What would the x, y, z, the rectangular coordinate be? Just looking at this picture. What is the x-coordinate associated? Zero, yes, because this is positive x over here, this is negative x, but we're lying on the y-axis, so it's in between the positive and negative zero. Now what's y? It is uh, very close, it's zero, negative two, one. 
because this is positive y over here. We traveled uh, a negative pi over 2. That puts us as if we were to travel 3 pi over 2 in the positive direction. Let's look at the point 2 negative pi over 2 in polar. So this is r theta equals 2 pi over 2, negative pi over 2. So we have the radius of 2. And then this negative pi over 2 sends it in the clockwise direction from the positive x-axis. So we travel this way. You know, they call it clockwise because that's the way like a clock goes or whatever. No, I'm kidding. Um, so it would end up right here. Clockwise is the, associated with the negative, uh, the negative theta. And so, right, this is positive, this is positive y-axis. This is negative y-axis. So it would be the point uh, 0, negative 2, would it not? It's below that x-axis. So um, we get uh, 0, negative 2, 1. All right. Um, Describe uh, equation given R equals five. What would this what would this represent as a surface in R three? So it doesn't depend, yeah, a cylinder with radius 5 at the origin. It doesn't depend on theta. It doesn't depend on z. So we get, um, oops, oops. Oh, no, uh, hit delete. Cool. So we get uh, a cylinder with radius 5 centered at the origin. So if this is negative 5, this would be positive 5. This would be positive 5. This would be negative 5. Ooh, that was bad. Ooh, that was bad. So, um, right, if we were to leave it as polar, this would be r equals 5, but we don't have any restriction on z, so it happens for all z, right? We have a bunch of, uh, yeah, yeah, it just looked like a horrible, a horrible monster of a cylinder. <laughs> oh, no, I did not draw that very well at all, but um, yeah, yeah, so r equals constant. You want to do it in vector. R equals constant, R equals C would be a cylinder radius uh, C at the origin, center at the origin. Okay. Now what if we what if we are asked to convert this is gonna happen later on in the course. This is gonna happen in uh, chapter 15 when you do multiple integrals. So in chapter 15 they'll have some crazy, crazy, like, integrals. This is, like, some crazy, like, um, equation that you're supposed to integrate. I don't think you guys have ever seen this before. So you, you have, like, a 36 minus 3x squared minus 3y squared. Um, and so it'd just be a lot easier to convert it to polar. Or it's a cylindrical. So we have z equals z, so z stays. And then we have a 36 minus, and factor out a 3, uh, negative 3, uh, x squared plus y squared. 
Well, x squared plus y squared and cylindrical is r squared. So this is actually this this equation right here will come. These types of things will come up, and uh, I don't know if you guys have covered it yet, but I think it's in 12.6 in Stewart's calculus book. Um, quadric surfaces. So if we have something like uh, z equals x squared plus y squared, this is just like the standard form of a paraboloid, a three-dimension parabola. Now, you see that the threes match up so that it's going to be like circular cross sections as opposed to if this was like a four and this was like a five or so they're, they're, if there were different numbers and they had the same sign, then it would not be a paraboloid, it would be an elliptic paraboloid. But since they're the same number, it just stretches it by like a like a constant factor. So it's even, uh, it's just, it's, it wouldn't be a, an ellipse uh, cross sections. But anyway, so we have, um, we would have this being a paraboloid. I don't know if I spelled that right at all. Um, and then it would be uh, flipped over the z-axis, stretched by a factor of three, and then shifted up 36 units. So flip the bow xy plane. Um, and then stretched by a factor of three. Shifted up 36 units. So we could actually graph this, this surface right here. Uh, identifying it, it's easier in rectangular, but integrating it, it would be easier in cylindrical. Um, so we would have shifted up, flipped over, so we would have um, really tall z axis. This is like 36, and then we have a paraboloid. The three just makes it a little bit more skinny. Yep, so it's a paraboloid. Uh, beautiful. Um, so what if we have uh, convert z squared equals x squared plus z squared to polar? Well, it's the same business. We have z equals z, so we have z squared equals r squared. Um, now, this shape, this, this quadric surface, since it's a z squared now, it's a cone. Yeah, so like a, a z equals x squared plus y squared paraboloid. But a z squared equals x squared plus y squared. This is a cone now. All right. Now let's uh, talk about uh, spherical, spherical coordinates. Man, I'm <laughs> I'm so bad at spelling. 
All right, so um, I guess it doesn't matter because I'm a math major. I don't have to spell many words. We have a, a, a point in spherical coordinates is rho, theta, phi, where rho, the Greek letter rho, is greater than or equal to zero, and uh, phi lies in between zero and pi. Now, what are these? What do, what do these symbols mean? Why are you telling me this? Well, rho is like analogous to r in cylindrical. It's the distance from origin. Theta is the same theta as cylindrical. It's the measure from the positive x-axis around. Right, this is z, this is x, this is y. From the positive x-axis going around, that's what theta is. Now phi, phi is the measure from the positive z-axis. So we start, you know, up here, and then if we were to go down, say, you know, notice the restriction, zero to zero to pi. So like pi over two, pi over two would be exactly at the xy plane. If we were to go all the way down to pi, then that measure would be um, at the negative z axis, right? So. Like if you want to do pi over six or whatever, that would be this angle right here, where this measures um, uh, pi over six or 30 degrees. So let's um, let's get some let's get the identities going. So in um, Spherical coordinates, we have conversions x equals rho sine phi cosine theta, y equals rho sine phi sine theta, and z equals rho cosine phi. Because if we build a triangle right here, then here's the right angle. This is the hypotenuse right here. This this actually is rho, because it's the distance, the measure from the origin to our point. So if that's rho, and then we have the hypotenuse is rho. We have our right angle here from here. Then this side of the triangle would be right here. And that's what that's what z is. Z. And then we have our angle phi, right? And so we have the identity, you know, like, okay, well, this is this is cos if we do cosine of phi. What it was cosine? It's adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so that's z equals rho cosine phi. So that's where z comes from. Um, and now, uh, r. Like this, these these two come from uh, from cylindrical. We have like x is equal to r cosine theta, y is equal to r sine theta. And now, if we substitute r equals rho sine phi, we get exactly these two. So that's where those come from. Um, 
because r is the distance from the origin, and so you would you'd probably build some triangle. I, I haven't I haven't really I didn't draw myself a picture for that, but um, but yeah, you, you guys are smart. You can just probably figure it out uh, if, if you look at it a little bit, or just you know look at the book or whatever. Um, so that that's where um, that's where that's that's spherical. Wouldn't R just be the other side of the triangle there? Uh, this one, yeah, yeah, it would. Yeah, because that's the distance. Yeah, that's the like, yeah, that's that's it. So this is R. Yeah, see, figured it out for me. And so we have sine of phi equals the opposite over hypotenuse. And so that means R equals rho sine phi. Yeah, that's perfect. And then you just substitute that in for what we have for cylindrical already. So um, very good, very good. Let's draw, uh, let's, let's plot the point. Uh, rho theta phi equals 6 pi over 3 pi over 6. OK, so let me get out my uh, handy dandy Ooh, I don't like that red. Oh well. Okay, so uh, let's let's travel. Let's do let's do theta first. So we're we're going from the positive x-axis to you know 60 degrees. So that that's like the measure of angle theta right here. This is pi over six or you know pi over three, and then pi over six would be the measure from the positive axis downward so like that this angle is pi over six and if this lies you know like right above our point or our uh our pi over three then our point would be six units away if this guy right here this side of the triangle was uh a distance of six so that would put our point up here somewhere now, if you want to convert to uh, rectangular, we just use our conversions, right? We have we have x equals rho sine phi cosine theta. X is equal to six sine phi pi over six cosine of pi over three. Both of these are one half because they're co-functions, right? And we would have 90 minus pi over 6, or pi over 2 minus pi over 6 is pi over 3, and vice versa. Uh, so we get x equals 6, 1 half, 1 half, this equals 3 over 2. Now we have y equals rho sine phi sine theta. So we get 6 sine pi over 6 sine pi over 3. So we get, uh, you know, this is 3 root 3 over 2. So we get 3 root 3 over 2. Z equals uh, rho cosine uh, phi. So that'd be 6 cosine pi over 6. So that would be 3 root 3. So x, y, z, converting this point in spherical to rectangular would be 3 over 2, 3 root 3 over 2, 3 root 3. Again, we have some irrationality in the y and z components, so maybe just deciding it in uh, spherical would be easier. Um, so... Let's convert um, spherical equation to rectangular. If we have rho squared, sine squared, phi, sine squared, theta, plus cosine squared, phi, equals 9, what is this in rectangular?
Well, let's distribute the row squared. We have row squared, sine squared phi, sine squared theta, plus row squared cosine squared phi equals nine. Well, this is exactly y squared. This is exactly z squared equals nine. So it's a cylinder with rulings parallel to the x-axis with radius three. Um, so it look like this. Some, something like that, something like that. The, it's gobbling up the, um, the x-axis. Now let's convert um, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 25 to spherical. So x was rho sine phi cosine theta. And we have plus rho sine squared phi sine squared theta plus rho squared cosine squared phi equals 25. Hmm. Let's factor out a rho squared. Well, let's factor out rho squared sine squared phi plus two. So what do we have? We have cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta plus rho squared cosine squared phi equals 25. That equals one. So we have sine, we have rho squared sine squared phi plus rho squared cosine squared phi equals 25. So what do we have? We have rho squared sine squared phi plus cosine squared phi equals 25. That equals one. So we have rho squared equals 25. Rho equals five. Um, and so I just tricked you into proving an identity. We have x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals rho squared. Memorize that one. All right, so that's all the material I have for y'all today. Um, are there any questions, anything you wanna see more of? Um, we have, you know, I, I stick around for another 20 minutes if you guys want, or we can end, er end early. Any questions? You're welcome. Good work today. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You are welcome. Here every week. See you guys later.